because, I mean, we've evolved in a certain kind of world and we can't change that too dramatically in the short term and think that we're still going to stay healthy and um, happy. This is, it's a major issue. It's in the newspaper every day, uh, whereas uh, I guess 10 years ago, I think it was about 1999 or 2000, somewhere around there, <clears throat> one of the major newspapers in Canada was going to run a front page article on global warming signed by half of all the living Nobel Prize laureates. Uh, that that particular article was pulled the night before because of a British pop group breaking up the day before that. Uh, so the British pop group was on the front page, global war warming went somewhere else uh, today. Right. It, yeah. Yeah, so, um, I mean, that, that's my main argument for, um, for thinking that perhaps we should rethink research priorities. Um, and I think that that's going to be, I mean, the re rethinking of research priorities is going to be a, a big issue down the track, um, you know, who should make the decisions about the research and development that should be undertaken, uh, who should make the decisions about where the money should be spent, and so on. Just uh, in closing, um, Arne Ness, before he died, was interviewed, and um, they asked him if he was optimistic about the future. He said for the near future, no, but for the long haul he thought that he was optimistic. Uh, can you give us uh, you know, what from the philosophy of science, you know, from from that field, what are you what are you seeing for the near future and so on? Uh, well, I sort of have have um, mixed feelings about whether I'm optimistic or pessimistic. I think by nature I'm basically fairly optimistic, um, but I do worry about. Um, certain developments uh, or, or the certain lack of um, long-sightedness from politicians and um, well I guess mainly from politicians and, and others who have a big influence in the way countries and, and the world is, is being run. I think there, if you're talking just about science and technology I think there are going to be big developments in, in health and in longevity, um, at least longevity in the sense that if the environment were okay we could live for, for a lot longer. Um, there will undoubtedly be big developments in clean energy and hopefully in, in um, food production and so on. Um, how all this plays out um, is a bit hard to say. I mean, I there are a couple of things. Sometimes when you read about um, global warming or climate change, it looks as if there could be dramatic effects, and not for the better, in the fairly short term. I mean, they are talking about now the ice cap in Antarctica um, disappearing at least for part of the year in you know within twenty or thirty years or something. Now that's probably a bit scary and the Greenland ice um, cap melting and so on. Um, if that happens, I mean, who knows um, what the situation will be at that stage. And at this point, there are um, already millions of refugees that you could say are climate refugees, such as in uh, Pakistan, for example, and, and other places. Well, that's right in the Pacific Islands too. I know there are not many people there, but there's not much land that's far above sea level either. So I think that um, that is a real a real concern. Uh, how about your views on human enhancement, uh, enhancing the body to uh, move beyond its uh, normal limitations? But I've got mixed feelings on this. My gut feeling is that I don't like it much, but I can't think of any really good arguments against it. Um, in principle, I think that given the current problems in the world with, you know, the big majority of the people um, 
not having enough to eat um, and um, having you know serious health problems, particularly in tropical areas, I don't think it's a good um, way of using resources. I think it's much more important, first of all, to get everybody up to a certain standard and then once we've done that then we can go on and do this. I think it's it's sort of pretty selfish really. Mm -hmm. Any uh, optimistic views for uh, for the coming short term? There's some elections coming up around the world, some major elections, one here in Korea, uh, in the United States, just had one in uh, Venezuela. Uh, how does that look for science and technology? Well, I can, I guess, really only talk for Australia and, I um, mean, the state of politics here I don't think is particularly <laughs> encouraging on either side. Um, one of the problems in a democracy like ours is that we only have three-year terms, oh. so there isn't a lot of incentive to look in the long term. The One of the worrying trends is that research in, in agriculture is being cut because people, uh, the government see that as a good way of saving money and nobody, well it's not going to affect their vote very much because there are not many people involved in agriculture. I think about 3% of people in Australia or something, they tend to forget that the other 90% all eat. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I, I think some of those trends are worrying. Uh, obviously it'll be reversed at some stage when, you know, if we start running out of food and so on, but it could be a lot of suffering in between. Um, I'm not sure about the US, I mean, with respect to science policy, I don't, don't really know um, what's likely to happen there. I've got views about what I think might happen with respect to wars and so on, but with science I'm not sure. <laughs> John, uh, it's been a pleasure to, to talk to you again, and um, thank you so much for your time. Okay, Lane, I'm happy to do it, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again at least on Skype before too long. Maybe in person, huh? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Good.